What's up, guys? Do you guys think I'm looking like I'm hurting or tired or whatever? It's because I am. Um, it's because I'm in serious pain. Now, I know normally I don't show any of you this, but I want you guys to see the reality of what really goes on whenever I'm not home. Whenever I'm going out to do stuff. What well, people like every day go through. And this doesn't just apply to me. This applies to everyone out there that's getting treated the way that I get treated. And it's not fair. If you guys remember yesterday, if you guys saw my live stream yesterday, I did say I was going out to get some videos for a vlog and do some, you know, do some photography. Well, I was. I was actually going to do that. When, if you guys don't remember Andrew's brother, the one that I took pictures of, if you guys don't know, you guys can look in my photo album of photography and photography art. His pictures are literally at the bottom of that. But... He is Andrew's brother. If you guys don't know Andrew, Andrew is the guy that slammed me into a stop sign a couple years back and caused me to have severe back issues ever since. Sad thing is, cops never did, did anything about it because he didn't admit to it. He didn't admit to what he did. Well, today... I was going out to get some photos up by the lake. There's this really cool S-shaped hill that I was getting a really cool picture of. Getting up on top of to get some get a nice view shot of the lake. Because that hill it overlooks the lake. It's a very nice shot. Very nice shot. And I was gonna do that. Well, I have my skateboard with me. Because as you guys know, I'm a skater. I love to skate. Been doing it since I was a kid. But I was up there skating around and getting photos and stuff. I stopped up at the top of that hill to get some photos. Andrew's brother comes along from behind. All I hear is, hey, asshole. I turn around. Next thing I know, Andrew's brother holds his foot out, shows me down the hill. I go down the hill, and at first I'm thinking, all right, I'm going down the hill. I got this. But no, I didn't have it. My board started going out of control like this, like wobbling back and forth, thanks to him. I go for, I get halfway down the hill. I get launched forward. My board truck, it slammed, my board slammed into the ground, the truck spins out of its socket. But when I hit, I don't just land, you know, like regular. I land elbow first. And I literally scorpion foot overhead and then wind up landing on my back. And as a result of that is this. Scraped up and banged out my entire fucking elbow. And I got my knee and hips a little bit too, but those are like small things. But this is the kind of stuff that I deal with every time when I go out outside to hang out with my, whether it's to hang out with my friends, whether it's to, you know, do whatever. And the sad thing is, because of me going to jail back in 2012 when I did, I'm not allowed to fight back. So if somebody were to hit me, I'm not allowed to fight back. Even if I'm just purely defending myself, I'm not allowed to fight back by judge's order. But here's the thing. When, is, why, when am I allowed to defend myself? When I'm almost dead? No. I guarantee you next time I see that asshole... I guarantee fuck it to you, I'm kicking his fucking ass. Because people like me get victimized every fucking day. And we're tired of it.
There are people like me that get victimized like this every day. We get bullied. We get beat up. Yeah, I'm older than him. I get it. But what is enough? Enough. The cops around here, they won't do shit. The last time when I got my back fucked up, they said they told me that they wouldn't arrest him because he wouldn't. Be, whenever Andrew slammed me into that stop sign post, he fucked up my back. They sat right there and they told me the most bullshit lie. I didn't need to go to the hospital when clearly I was in major pain. Like, I could barely fucking walk. And two, they told us right, they told me right in front of my mom's face that they couldn't do anything or wouldn't do anything because he didn't admit, he wouldn't admit to what he did. Like, dude, who's just going to admit to what they fucking did? To a police officer. Are you fucking kidding me? Nobody's that fucking dumb or stupid. Well, I can't necessarily say fuck to 508 because I do have, you know, my uncle who is a retired police officer. And like I said, I do know quite a few good police officers, but most of them are from, you know, my high school years and they're all retired by now. So I can't say fuck all 50, but around here for a majority of the ones that don't want to do their fucking job, yeah, I can say that. But... Because of what happened, I've been laid up in bed. When I wasn't eating dinner, I was laying down trying to fucking sleep. When I first got home, I got my arm bandaged. And I tried sleeping. And it's hard. It really is hard. And honestly, I'm lucky that I didn't break my arm from the goddamn impact. Because when I went down that hill, I did it for fucking 30 miles an hour. And almost, I could have broken my arm. Thankfully, I didn't. But, you know, people like me get victimized every day, and we're fucking tired of it. I'm tired of being victimized. I can't even go outside to do a vlog or do a photography game getting fucked with. And it's sad. Because if you guys know me, I love to film. I love to do stuff. I love to be outside. Like, that's me. But for my own safety, that's why I'm a home person. That's why I don't go outside much. That's why I'm always gaming out or doing whatever. Because I know that if I step outside, there's a good chance of this happening again. Like, it's ridiculous, you know? People like me, we get victimized every day for no reason. And honestly, we're all sick and tired of going through that. Because like I said, when is enough going to be enough? Like, what's it going to take for you cops, you police, who are supposed to be serving and protecting us? What is it going to take? Like, when are you guys going to fucking take your job seriously and do what you need to do? Like, is it going to take one of us being dead for you guys to do something? Well, I guarantee you, I don't plan on dying anytime soon. Because like I said, whether I get arrested or not, I don't give a fuck. Next time I see Andrew's brother and he tries that shit again, I guarantee you, I'm laying his ass out. And that is not a threat. That is a fucking promise. Because people like me are tired of being victimized and brutally assaulted, battered, and in some cases with some girls, raped. And them getting away with it. We're all fucking tired of it.
Oh, hell yeah, Allison. That would be fucking awesome. Like, I can't wait for that. That would be fucking dope. But at this point, I don't know whether or not I'll be working at that place or not now due to my injuries. Um, I'm pretty fucking sore. There's no doubt. Um, I won't be working there as planned this weekend coming out, but the weekend after, when my mom finally gets her car, I will be there. Ooh. Mm, I know you guys probably heard that. Mm. But, you know, like I said, what is it going to take for you police officers, not only in my area, but in any area that aren't doing your job? What's it going to take for you to start doing your job right? Like, you knew what you signed up for. You knew what you signed up for. And yet, what do you do? You abuse your powers. Yes, there's a lot of you that put your lives on the line every day who actually do do your job. And we thank you for that. Like, we commend you guys for that. you guys for that. For those of you that do do your job correctly. But as for those of you that don't, that just want to be lazy and not deal with the paperwork, why'd you even sign up for the job in the first place? Your job is to serve and to protect. And yet, what do you do? You abuse your power. And like I told Aiden, Matt, I can't say, you know, fuck all the police, because like I said, my uncle is a retired police officer for the Portland, Oregon Police Department. And I do know quite a few police officers that are very nice. Um, you know, they watch after me, they watch my back, and they actually do their job correctly. But for the most part, for those around here that don't do their job, yes, I can say that. But, you know, this is the result of what happens every time I go to them that I enjoy. I end up getting bullied and victimized. And I'm fucking tired of it. Honestly, I'm lucky that none of my fucking gear broke. Because right now, in camera lenses, tripod, phone... Uh, Kindle. I have over a thousand dollars worth of gear right here alone. I'm lucky none of that broke. And the reason why is this beautiful son of a bitch right here. This is actually given to me on my birthday a few years ago by my supposed best friend. I don't know if we're best friends still or not. We haven't talked in so long. But this is given to me by my friend Crystal. Um, this actually is a camelback that has actually been through the Iraq war. That has seen two to three tours and made it through safely with her husband's dad. If you guys can see the scuff marks right there, that's where I slid. Like when I went onto my back, that's where I slid. And this thing has taken no damage. Like there's there's no, like, there's no damage to that. There's no damage to this. Like, this thing is the best piece of gear I've honestly ever owned. Like, I fucking love this thing. So, thank you, Crystal. This thing actually has saved my life a few times. And to Crystal's um, dad, I want to say thank you for your service, man. I'm glad this thing made it back safe. I'm glad you made it back safe. Shout out to everybody in the military that made it back safe and is coming home soon. I know you guys got to be excited for Christmas. But I will be doing, I will be using this as a camera rig for my gaming, like 
doing controller cams, doing wheel cams whenever I can get a new Wii remote for Need for Speed Pro Street. I'll be doing a wheel setup on that with this, which I'm super excited about. But this back has honestly saved my life. It kept me from scraping on my back very badly. And is my neck sore from the fall? A little bit, yeah, but you know, that's that's typical. When you fall and you slide on your back, your head goes back like that. Like when you hit your back, it automatically whips back, snaps back. But this is just typical for me. This is from also from laying down wrong the other night too. So it's not just from the fall, it's from laying down wrong or sleeping weird or whatever. But, you know, like I said, you know, there are people like me every day that get bullied and beat up and we're tired of it. I'm tired of just sitting here not being able to do anything. Because you guys don't know, I hate being inside. I'm not an inside person. Every chance I get, I like to be outside, whether it's shooting photography, whether it's, you know, filming a movie, you know, whether it's filming a vlog, whatever I'm doing, I love being outside, doing stuff, having fun. That's me. Oh, damn, dude. Sounds like you need to get some rest, Brett. But, you know, like I said, you know, not only am I thankful that none of my gear that I use daily, not only am I thankful that none of my gear is broke, but I'm even more thankful that my arm's not broke. It's just very sore right now. Ooh. And if you guys heard that, that was a result of my wrist popping back into place. Earlier, I had to pop one of my fingers back in the socket from it because that's how hard I hit. Like, I, when I fell, my body fucking ragdolled, and it was not fun. Matter of fact, let me go grab my board, and I'm going to show you just exactly what happened, which I do plan on fixing it. But I want you guys to see what that wreck caused my board to do. So give me just one moment. So when I was going down the hill, like I told you guys, yeah, I flew forward and landed on my board. My board went up in the air. I mean, my board went like this up in the air with me. And when it came down, it didn't just, you know, simply go like that and then go and slam down and it dug in. It dove into the ground and sadly, this is the result of what happened. Which I can fix it. I just gotta get the truck re-spun around and then back into that hole. But first I gotta loosen this bitch up. Which is gonna be a pain in the ass because I have to completely take the trucks off, realign everything like this. This is gonna be a mess. But that's the result of my board right now. Like, that's the extent of that. But honestly, I really am tired of being victimized. I'm tired of every time I walk out my door to do something that I really enjoy, 
like whether it's photography, whether it's, you know, like I said, shooting film work, you know, shooting a vlog, or even just the simplest thing as, you know, going outside to meet up with some friends. And the shit like this always happens. And you guys wonder why I never go outside and do anything? Well, now you know. Yeah, I've gotten messed with and bullied and beat up before, but never to this extent. Like, this is by far the worst. Yeah, I'm getting slammed into that stop sign post on the way back from one of Mike's, which is now shut down. I'm like, yeah, getting slammed into that stop sign out of my back fucked up was pretty damn bad. Don't get that messed my back up pretty fucking good. And because of that, yes, I do have severe back issues. But imagine... having to raise your arm and not being able to do so because it hurts too fucking bad. That's how bad this arm is right now. Uh, yeah, when I, when I lifted it, it hurts, but I ignore the pain. But... I honestly, I'm tired of getting victimized by people like this. It's like, what's it going to take for somebody to do something? Like, for real, like, don't get me wrong, I'm going outside. I'm, I'm an outside person, like I said. I enjoy outside. I love doing stuff outside. I love running, hiking, playing basketball, playing ba baseball, uh, doing parkour. You know, just having, but due to issues with people like Andrew and his brother and stuff like this happening, it's very hard for me to do. That's why I stay inside a lot of times to avoid that. Because you guys don't know, yeah, I may do, you know, the types of music that I do, but you know. Ultimately, at heart, I'm a, I'm a fucking country boy. I know. In the city, not much for me to do. And there's a little bit, but not much. But you get me out in the country, I can find a million things to do and have fun. Hell, you give me a fucking dirt bike, I'm going nuts. Give me a dune buggy, hell, let's tear some dirt up. You give me a tree, I'm climbing that bitch if I can climb it. You got a lake, and you got some woods with some deer, I'm going hunting and fishing. That's me. I'm an outside dude. I will take a fucking bonfire over the mall any day of the week. I would rather have a bonfire with those that I love and care about. Rather than go to the mall and go shopping for stupid shit that I don't need to be buying. Stuff that I can't even use. Now, if it were for something I can use, then yeah, I might. But for the most part, and to me, the mall is not a hangout spot. It's just another shop. It's just a big area full of shops. Like fucking, to me, the mall is like Walmart. Alright, it's just a store. You go there to buy, buy shit, not to hang out. The point is... You know, this is why I can never go outside, hardly. Not because, it's not because I don't want to. That's, that's not at all. I want to go outside. I want to be able to do stuff. But 
out of pure fear of Andrew and his brother and what they do and how they terrorize not only myself, but probably terrorize other people. It's very hard for me to do so. So when I do get the chance to go to go outside, it's, it's rare. It's very rare that I get the chance to go outside. And believe me, I hate not being able to go outside. I hate it. And believe it or not, dude, like I'm not letting him win, but I'm just protecting my own ass by doing that. Because, you know, like they've been terrorizing me for several years now. Several years. And each time it gets worse and worse. But this is by far the worst that they've gotten. And yeah, I have some really cool ass biker buddies that watch my back, but unfortunately they weren't around to take care of it. But uh, I guarantee you when they find out, <laughs> I guarantee you he ain't gonna be walking very long. You know, it's sad when I have to rely on my biker buddies to take care of somebody when the police won't do a damn thing. And I hate resorting to violence. I'd rather see somebody get arrested than get the shit knocked out of them. Even if they do deserve it. I mean, I'm, I'm a peaceful person. I don't like to fight unless I absolutely, unless I absolutely have to. Like, I'm not a fighter. Like, I mean, I am. Like, I do know how to fight, but I don't like to. Hate fighting. I would rather walk away from a fight and then to have one start up and one of us wind up getting arrested. Do I want to kick Andrew's brother's ass and Andrew's ass for what they've done to me over the years? Oh, absolutely. There's nothing I'd love more than to knock their asses out for what they did to me. But being as the way things are, and from me being arrested back in 2012, I'm not allowed to lay a hand on them. Which is sad. Because the crime I committed back in 2012 was because of my ex. She got inside my head and I wound up blacking out and hurting my mom, not knowing I hurt my mom. I went to jail for 24 hours, got out, got the charges dropped from a felony because it was my first time. I dropped from a felony to a misdemeanor. It went from um, domestic abuse to disorderly conduct from a family member because it was my first time. Well, when I got out and went in front of the judge and stuff, on the thing, it stated that I'm not allowed to lay my hand on anyone, no matter what. Even in self-defense, I'm not allowed to fight back. Which I think is bullshit, but it is what it is. And honestly, I don't want to go back to jail. I really don't. When I went to jail the first time, that was the that was the scariest moment of my fucking life. I saw stuff in that jail cell that most would never see in their lifetime. I saw more stuff within that twenty four hours than most would ever see. I saw fights break out. I saw people in straight jackets getting drugged across the floor that were bloody from them being stupid trying to bang their head up against the door. You know, I watched a dead guy who got murdered in there being drugged across the floor. And you don't think that shit doesn't fuck with you? 
And trust me, when you're in jail, time stops. It literally stops. And it will fuck with you unless you control yourself. And it almost got to me. I started freaking out. But thankfully, I had a couple of good friends, ironically, that I had known for many years in there with me to help keep me level-headed. Which they got arrested for, like, weed charges and shit like that. But that was, that was whatever. But these are friends that I've known since high school that were in there. So thankfully, thankfully, I had them to kind of, you know, keep me grounded and keep me calm and steady. Because I'll admit that first time. I'm not gonna lie, I broke down in fucking tears. I freaked out because that, that jail cell was so fucking tiny. Like, it's a literally broom closet size. Like, those jail cells, they are broom closet. They are like a fucking broom closet. They are fucking tiny. Hey, Ben, to be honest, man, not too good. I know normally I'm coming on here and, you know, speaking good, but tonight, as you can tell, not blessed. But people really don't realize just what jail is like. Jail is a man-made hell. Jail and prison, they are, they're a man-made hell. I'm not going to lie, they are man-made, they are pure hell on earth. Straight up, you want pure hell on earth, go to jail, go to the jail here in Akron, or go to, go to straight up prison. Either one is pure hell. When people speak of the hellhole of the, when people speak of man-made hell here in Akron, people automatically think either jail or prison around here. Because those two places really are hell. And I survived hell. I survived Akron's hell. And it wasn't easy, but I did it. And yeah, if you want to know what happened after this live stream, go back and watch it back. And I, I explained what really happened. So if you guys missed out, all you got to do is go back. And rewatch this from the beginning to where I explain what happened. But now you guys know why I'm not allowed to fight back. And something that haunts me, especially when I know I want to fight back, but unfortunately, like I said, I am not able to. Because if I lay my hands on anyone, I go back to jail, whether it's self-defense or not. And I've got way too much going for me to go back to jail now. i got way too much going for me. Like, you know, I'm finally getting releases. You know, I'm finally putting out my music music the right way. I'm getting stuff going in the right direction. And I can't fuck that up now. I cannot let anything fuck that up for me. And believe me, it's mm. so 
explain how there's a humidity in here and shit. But, you know, like, as much as I want to do something, guys, I can't. All I can do is call the police. And it's sad. But that's all I can do, and even that won't do any good. So basically, I'm not so well. And do I know where either of these guys lives? Well, I used to know where Andrew lives, but he moved. I don't know where his brother lives either, so I'm screwed. But anyways, y'all, I'm going to hop off here, try to get some more rest, maybe watch some TV or something. I might finish up my dinner that I didn't finish and chill. I don't know. But um, as now you know what I really go through when I'm out there. Now you know why I'm so much at risk when I'm outside the house. Like I said, I don't want to be inside, but I have no other options. Anyways, guys. I love you guys, and if you guys, <clears throat> and if you guys did miss out, watch back, watch this live stream back, and where I explain everything. Well, with that being said, I love you guys. I'll see you guys later, man. Peace.